All right, it is six o'clock. How you guys doing tonight? Good. I want to invite you guys to stand, and we're gonna worship. All right, got a bump. Got a bump for the world in motion. Got a bump for my hopes and fears. And I don't care what the world throws at me now. I'm gonna be alright. Hear the sound. Hear the sound of the generations. Making loud their freedom song All in all that the world would know your name We're gonna be alright cause I know my God saved the day and I know His word never fails And I know my God made a way for me Salvation is here Hear the sound, you hear the sound of the generations making loud their freedom song. All in all, that the world would know your need. We're gonna be alright, cause I know my God saved the day, and I know His word never fails, and I know. Salvation is here. Salvation is here. Salvation is here. Salvation is here and it lives in me. Salvation is here. Salvation that died just to set me free. Salvation is here. Salvation is here and it lives in me. Salvation is here. Jesus, cause you are alive and you live in me. Salvation is here. Salvation is here and it lives in me. Salvation is here. You are alive and you live in me Cause I know my God saved the day And I know His word never fails And I know my God made a way for me It's gonna be alright Cause I know my God saved the day And I know His word never fails And I know Salvation is here. He's good, amen. Father, we thank you for your presence tonight, God. We worship you, Lord. We just give you all the glory, God. All the glory, God. This is my prayer in the desert. This is my prayer in the desert. When all that's within me feels dry. This is my prayer in my hunger and need. My God is the God who provides my prayer on the fire. This is my prayer in the fire. 
walk in weakness or trial or pain. There is a faithful Gamora than gold, so we find me all through the fleet. Oh, and I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare. God is my victory and he is here. He is here. He is here. He is here. It's my prayer in the battle. This is my prayer in the battle. When triumph is still on its way, I am a conqueror and co-heir with Christ. So firm on His promise I stand. Yes, and I will bring praise. I will bring praise. No weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory, and I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapon formed against me shall remain, I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory, and he is he. season you are still God and I have a reason to sing yes I have a reason to worship all of my life all of my life in every season you are still God and I have a reason to sing Yes, I have a reason to worship all of my life. Yes, all of my life, in every season, you are still God, and I have a reason to see. I have a reason to worship all of my life. Yes, all of my life, oh God. All of my life, in every season, you are still God, and I have a reason to see. Yes, I have a reason to worship, and I will bring praise. And I will bring praise. I will bring praise. The weapon formed against me shall be. I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory, and I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapon formed against me shall remain, I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory, and he is here. Father, we just thank you for your presence tonight, God. 
Father, you're worthy, Lord. Pray that we continue just to set aside every distraction and just give you all the focus, God. Give you all the glory. The sky is laid low where you are. On the earth you rest your feet. If the hands that create all the stars are the hands that led for. I know you're with me. And I know that you're with me. Yes, I know that you're with me. And I know you're
interesting me how <laughs> the message always goes with what we're singing. <laughs> we practice open communion here at the house to anyone who'd like to, but we encourage you that you have a right relationship with the Lord and that um, you have a right relationship with people in your life and you're walking in forgiveness because communion is a very powerful thing. A couple weeks ago, I was laying in bed with Quinny and she was sleeping and uh, I was praying over her and speaking the word over her and these three scriptures just rolled out of me that I was um, 
praying over her, and she, oh, just second, the presence of God is just so strong. Um, these three scriptures that I'm about to share with you just rolled out of me, and I looked at her, and I was like, you cannot fail. We cannot fail with these scriptures that I'm about to share with you. No matter what's going on in your life, we cannot fail. And so what I want to do is have you guys go ahead and close your eyes and keep in a <clears throat> line with worship and your focus on him tonight. And um, I want to read these scriptures to you. 1 John 4.15 Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides and lives in him, and he abides and lives in God. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Hebrews 4, 16, just to wrap those two up, he let us therefore come boldly, fearlessly, confidently to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And when I put all those three together, praying over her that night, it just lit up in me. She can't fail. And I feel like that's the message that the Lord wanted me to share with you tonight, is you can't fail when you're positioned because of what Jesus did for us. Communion is about what Jesus did for us. And he's a loving God. Above all else, he's a loving God, and he sent his son so that he could bring you near. And these three scriptures define that. Whew. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to think about that, and if you can wrap your mind, your spirit around this, that it's even more real, that the positioning that he did for us, where we sit with him, is more real than even the chair that you're sitting in right now. So tonight, as we take the bread, we thank you, Father, for Jesus, and we thank you, Jesus, that you went to the cross willingly because you loved us so much, and you took, you took the beatings on your body so that we could walk in health. And so that we could walk in victory and so that we could not fail and so that we could be brought near to you. So I thank you, Lord, for that. The bread. I thank you, Lord, for the blood. <laughs> I thank you, Lord, for the blood. Because of what you did for us, Jesus, you, you brought us near. That's what it says in your word. And just like the song, you are here with us. We abide in you and you abide in us. And we can come boldly to you, to our loving Father, who wants us to be successful in everything that we do. And I thank you, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over our minds, our will, and our emotions. And I thank you that all everyone here walks in all that they're called to do because of what you did on the cross. They walk in health and wholeness and restorations in their families, in their workplace, and everything else that they're involved in. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we transition back to worship. Actually, I got to just okay. do a couple things. Okay. You can give her that. Thanks, Candace. That was fantastic. Great word for us. <clears throat> Just I, I know that tonight God wants to do some healings and some miracles. Um, and uh, Shelby, come here for a second. Come here. And I need Anna and Faith and Hosanna. Just come up here. Just go up and, and, and give her a great big hug. Because love is the way to heal. 
all right? Her hip's been bothering. Be healed in Jesus' name. Close your eyes, guys, and think of Jesus when you do it. Now give her a hug. <laughs> be healed in Jesus' name. Stiffness go, pain go. If you want to keep playing a little bit, that'll be all right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, give your check. Give it a test, sir. How does that feel? It's better. Imagine that. That's great. Now, you three ladies, I need you to do one more thing for me. I want you to go back and see Miss Sylvia. Miss Sylvia, raise your hand right now. Go back and lay hands on her and hug her. Do the same thing you did for Shelby and do it for her. I believe their inner ear thing is going to be healed tonight, right now. That was the prophetic word that was given to me earlier, and I just believe you're getting it right now. Be healed, Syl. Be healed. Someone here with a knee, I think it's your right knee, it's been giving you problems. Um, be healed right now, is that you? All right, be healed in Jesus' name. I just believe you'll feel a warmth start to go over it right now. There it is. Thank you, Lord. Um, <laughs> this was um, Sarah came to me and said, there's someone here that has an um, intestinal thing going on. <laughs> I know too much. Um, and that uh, your healing is coming right now. Just receive it right now. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. There's someone here that's had an achiness in your jaw and it's been into you, actually going right into your ear. Who is that? Achiness in your jaw going into your ear. Ready? Receive your healing now in Jesus' name. Be healed. Go ahead and move your jaw around. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. What's happening right now, in case you're wondering what's happening, it's nothing weird or anything like that it's just it well yeah it's kind of weird but um it's called words of knowledge it's it's getting in the spirit and hearing things from god and then using that to see miracles happen uh gift of the spirit you see it in in uh first corinthians chapter 12 verses 4 and following praise god There's someone here, uh, this is going to sound kind of weird, but you're getting a buzzing sensation in your eyes. It's like your eyes are just, mm, it's bugging you a lot. Is there anybody here like that? No? Boy, I just really sense that. That's okay. What's that? Oh, right here? Okay. Peace. No more. No more. No more. Thank you, Jesus. We have one more song. I want to make be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Let's do whatever he tells me to do here. There's a few of you that have just knots in your back. Knots in your back. <laughs> As we begin to sing this last song, if you'll do something, if you'll just stand up and just put your hands straight up, you'll feel, it's like you'll plug into the power of God and his, his, his electricity will just go right down through your body and it'll bring soothing to those muscles. <laughs> There's quite a few of you that are going to get that. <laughs> That's awesome. Praise God. You got a good song for us? Preston, a good one, last song. All right. It's Heavenly Places, <laughs> um, which <laughs> completely ties into what Candace was talking about this evening. Um, and we didn't even talk about it, wherever she is now, which is so awesome. Um, it's awesome when God does that. <laughs> How's your knee? Great. Good. Praise God. <laughs> Our place on the cross. 
satisfied the gift of eternal life. Yeah. All to you. Today I've been getting this picture of a bridge in my mind throughout the day whenever I turned on worship music or, or started singing. And, um, and the picture is of the bridge and and we're I, I'm holding something in my hand. And and I don't know what that could be for you. It could be fear, insecurity, or sickness, or, or pain, or um, whatever it may be. And what I feel like God is trying to tell me through that is, we need, we, we got to let go. And because if we hold on to that, we are putting that between ourselves and God. So I just, I just encourage you to place that in front of him tonight. Place of praises. 
So, Father, we just thank you for tonight, God. We love you. We thank you for all the words that you've spoken and all the healing, God, that you provided for us. And just all your encouragement, God. And I just thank you that it doesn't stop now, that it continues on and on, God. Because your grace and your mercy and your love, God, it continues on and on, God. And we just thank you that you're never ending. You never cease, you never fail, and you never stop, God. So we just love you and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, give somebody a high five next to you. Tell them they look good in the house tonight. How's everybody doing? Woo! Heard a woo! Woo! Good worship tonight. It was awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. It was good. Well, uh, welcome to the house, Saturday nights. Um, If you're a first time guest here, or home, whatever you want to call it, fill this card out. We got some uh, something cool to give you in the mail, and we just want to get to know you. Um, So go ahead and fill that out. That's awesome. Yeah. Isn't that? Also on your tables, you'll find a uh, uh, program. So you can follow along with Mike's message tonight and also gives uh, upcoming um, things that are coming up on the calendar as well. Right, Josh? Yeah. Yeah? Good. Uh, May 3rd, we will be launching two services. All right? That's really cool. All right? May 3rd. Put that in your calendars. Um, so if you want more information... You know, talk to Mike or Val or go online. Also, it'll be on there as well. Uh, I think there's a countdown and all types of good stuff. Huh, Josh? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, also, go on the website. Check out our upcoming events we've got going on. Um, you know, and also, let's say hi to our viewers. Hi, viewers. We are live right now, so it's pretty cool. You can, wherever you're at, you can come up and or go online and check us out. That's so awesome. So good. So here's a couple of upcoming events. We've got a Bible study. Uh, men and women meet Thursdays, 7 p.m. here at the church. Uh, for uh, the men, see Justin. Women, see Karin. All right? Yep. Okay. Uh, also, uh, we've got School of Health and Healing. That's next Saturday, the 12th, um, at 10 to 11 a.m. in the youth room here. Uh, so come grow in your understanding about how health and healing and uh, is a divine right of every believer. So see Pastor Val for that one. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, Also, Easter Sunday, which is the 19th, uh, we'll have baptism. So if you've never been baptized before or you know someone that, uh, even if they don't come here but is wanting to get baptized, invite them. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, See Candace for that. We're going to try to get a head count to see how many people are going to uh, be participating. Yep. Good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Love 360 Youth. Let me hear you. Where are you at? Yeah. All right. Woo! Um, they are raising money right now. So if you want to give to an incredible cause, our youth, which is, doesn't get much better than that, does it? No? Oh, look at that. Money. Um, Katie, give me one of those. So they're selling these awesome bumper stickers. It's hard to see right here, but it's the house. Uh, window decals. So pick one up. They're five bucks or as much as you want to give. So, um, awesome. Give. It's fun, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have anything else to say? No, I think that's it. Thank you so much for your input today. You're great. Here at the house, we don't take an offering, but what we do is we give you the opportunity to partner with us in giving. Uh, we have a black box over here in the corner. Uh, so uh, if you're going to be writing a check, make it payable to the house. Uh, cash, put it in the... Uh, Envelopes on your table look like this. It also has a place where you can do credit card. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and fill that out. And every week we also have someone giving the message uh, about giving and how important it is and why it's important to give and what the Bible talks about that. Right, Josh? Yeah. 
So this week we have uh, none other than Mr. Justin Self. Give it up for Justin. Yeah. Hi. I have some props, so I'm going to get those out. This is my dinner plate for my house. This is loaf of bread. And this is a bunch of lentils, but they're supposed to represent seeds, all right? My wife told me that they're legumes, they're not seeds, but for this purpose, they're seeds, okay? So I've got some seeds. And so I want you to, um, okay, so we can kind of see it here. You got my loaf of bread. Okay, so uh, these are seeds, right? So you got to think about the seeds as money. That's what I'm talking about here. So there's my seeds. Um, <laughs> I just got to say, I, the Lord gave me this to talk about today. And then during worship, he just, it just all came together. Um, just his presence is so awesome. And he just gave me, um, I just, he's so good. I love him so much. Um, okay, so I just want to read this, this scripture real quick. It's out of first, or Second Corinthians chapter 9, um, 10 through 13. And it says, God gives seed to the farmer and food to those who need to eat. Um, God will also give you seed and multiply it. In your lives, he will increase the things that you do that have his approval. God will make you rich enough so that you can always be generous. And, um, and so I wanted to bring these visuals up here because I want to describe the difference between seed and bread, okay? And so um, seed is the resource that we have, uh, the resources that we have that we can sow or we can give or we can um, make work for us, right? And then bread is the thing that we need to survive, okay? We need to survive um, food and clothing, jobs or whatever, you know, bread, food, and, um, and stuff like that. It's what you consume for yourself. Um, the thing about seed is seed is meant to be sown, Right? Um, it doesn't work if you don't sow it. So, like, I could have all the seed in the world, but if I don't sow it, <laughs> it's not going to do any good. It's just going to sit here on my plate, and it's never going to turn into this, you know? And so, um, like, with our finances, um, you know, we sow seed. And the cool thing is, is that uh, God set forth a law. Back in Genesis chapter 1, he said that seed will produce, um, or the fruit and the vegetables and stuff will produce after its own kind. And so, like, what's in the seed will cause that thing to produce, and it will produce after its own kind. And so when he uses, in this scripture here in 2 Corinthians, the whole chapter is all about giving, and it's all about money and finances. And so he's, he uses that um, as, as, as an example um, of giving and uses seed. And I think it's interesting how he uses seed and bread as, as money, right? And so... Um, uh, uh, he says that he who sows sparingly, sparingly will reap sparingly as well. So you see the farmer that sows a lot of seed, he's going to get a big harvest. Um, the Bible talks about how we give generously and will receive generously and, um, and how it can do good things. But I'm talking about how uh, it reproduces after its own kind. You know, we can give money and we can uh, bless others. And I'm not talking about just money, but we give our time and our energy and our resources and ourself um, and we sow it, and we sow it, and we sow it, and we sow it. You know, instead of eating it all and hoarding it all to ourselves, right, we sow the seed. We don't just hold it, and it'll produce a crop, you know, and it's exciting. Um, and the cool thing is, is we're always going to have the bread. Um, God, the scripture says that God provides seed for the sower, so he's going to give you the seed so that you can sow it, and he's going to provide the bread for you. So my wife and I have been married seven months, and um, we've had some really crazy financial stuff happen, and... We've had situations where, like, the money um, the money isn't in the account. Like, we just don't have enough to pay the bills, or it just doesn't look like it's going to be quite right, or it just doesn't look like it's going to pan out on paper. Um, but we've, we've made the priority to give. We've made the priority to sow seed. And we, this is one of the scriptures. I have this scripture written on my budget sheet at home. It's written on there. And every time I'm doing my budget, and I see that, oh, you know, this week might not work out, I see that scripture right next to it. And I remember, okay, God said that he's going to provide seed for us to sow, and he's going to provide bread for eating. So if I'm faithful, and I do what he says, and I, and I sow the seed that he's given me, you know, he's going to give me the bread to eat. He's going to make my ends meet. And, of course, it always works. For seven months, we've been married, and it's worked every single time. And I have so many amazing stories about how God's just blessed us above and beyond. Um, one of those cool things is that I just got um, – I used to work on nights. I've been working night shift for the whole time we've been married, and so I hardly ever see my wife. <laughs> and so uh, I, I just got on day shift. So today was my first day of day shift. And so now I have a life. So <laughs> praise God. 
you know. So anyway, it just and so many other things with our finances. Just we're blessed. We're so blessed. You know, things just don't look like they work, but we give and it works. You know, and so I just wanted to encourage you guys with that. Um, the bottom line here is, it's don't eat your seed. Okay, you have seed. Don't eat your seed because he's going to give you the bread. You know what I mean? You, the, the seed is meant for sowing. So let's sow our seed and, and let's see some amazing things happen. So um, thank you, Lord, so much for this evening. Um, God, we, <laughs> we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, I thank you for the word that you're going to share tonight through Pastor Mike. I thank you for the miracles and I thank you for your, um, your presence and your spirit, Lord, that's setting people free. I know it's going to happen and I'm very excited to see it, Lord. We love you so much. Um, we just thank you for your presence, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Justin. I don't need it. You can take it with you. It's good to be in the house, isn't it? It's good to see so many of our friends from uh, Bingen here. Yeah. So if you're from the Bingen house, just kind of wave your hand wildly right now. Give them a round of applause. Yeah. Right on. It's good to have you guys here. I love you guys. I heard you guys had a good service last uh, Sunday night. I heard Tim was playing the guitar in the spirit. Long story, I won't get into it. All right, cool. Um, as you can see again, just take a look around. We need to go to two services because if we don't, you know, another family walks in and then they're going to go, where do we sit? They'd go, maybe next to Matt and Janelle. And then they say, maybe not. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so... We're, uh, it's coming, so we really need your help. Just a quick question for you guys. If you're planning on uh, going to the 430 service, just raise your hand real quick. All right. If you're planning to go to the 630 service, raise your hand. That's what we kind of figured, about a maybe two-thirds, one-third. So if you're planning on going to the 630 service, and you might want to th- say, try out the 430 service, you know, that'd be cool too. Also, uh, great opportunities to serve. If you're going to the 430 service, look at serving in the 630 service. If you're going to the 630 service, look at serving in the 430 service. We'd really appreciate that, and it'd be a real blessing to everyone involved. We just want to make room for more people to come and experience the power and the love of God that we're experiencing, right? So I've been saying a lot of, you know, I've been give, doing like blonde jokes and stuff like that lately, right? And it kind of makes fun of women. Right? I don't know. I know. But um, I've had a couple people come to me and say, hey, Pastor Mike, I'm a little bit concerned. You've been making fun of the women, you know. So let's just turn it around tonight, okay? A lady went to see a psychic who predicted her future. Lady, I'm sorry to inform you that your husband will die in the near future. Don't tell me things I already know. Tell me if there will be an investigation. (laughs) Lisa needs brain surgery, and she figures it's easier to buy a new brain. She asks the doctor what he has on sale. Well, you're in luck. I have two in stock. A man's brain for a thousand and a woman's for a hundred. Surprised, she asks, why is the price difference? Generally, women's brains run cheaper because they come to us used. All right. We're starting a new series tonight. I'm going to stop while I'm ahead, right? Starting a new series called Rescued, and I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I'd say this every time we start a new series, how excited I am about the opportunity to come together and share God's word and a new theme. You know, the Spirit of God, He's the one that gives us the direction, gives me the direction, uh, usually six to eight months in advance on what I'm supposed to be talking about. And um, I'm really excited about this because, you know, we need to know that God is there to rescue us. And a lot of times we... um, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Let's just, uh, my friend Dave Morrow, how many of you remember my friend Dave Morrow that came to the church? He climbed uh, the seven highest peaks in the seventh continents, right? And he came in after he had climbed Mount Everest and he came and shared his uh, testimony with us. I think it was maybe the second week that we were here in the building, in this building. And um, 
he was asking a question about that he was going to go speak at the boys and girls club up in um, in Arizona, a boys club, and they were asking him to speak to a group of boys about what it takes to be a man. And so on his Facebook, he asked the question, well, what do you guys think? It, what does it take to be a man? And uh, so all this different stuff was thrown out there, um, some appropriate, some <laughs> inappropriate, but... Um, and, uh, but, uh, he wrote this a little bit later on after he had gotten, uh, a bunch of different insight. And I even told him, you know what, really, you ought to check out what I'm going to talk about tonight because he, he, he put this thing out there. He said, should the definition of a man include something wild and untamed inside of him? Should he be a little bit dangerous? I thought, man, what a great question. I have a feeling and I, I have a belief that God created us all to want to live on the wild side a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? There's all sorts of different kinds of sports that are out there. They call them, and the people that are involved with them, they call them uh, adrenaline junkies, right? And they're out doing, you know, pushing the limits on different things and trying to do more and getting out there and doing more than people have ever done before. Matter of fact, when you think of like Evil Knievel, how many of you remember Evil Knievel? Right? And uh, jumping over, you know, buses and stuff like that. Was it 17 buses or something like that, right? Actually, now, the jumps that they make on the uh, motorcycles now is a lot farther and a lot higher. And they're doing flips, you know, as well. And they're letting go of the bike and then grabbing the bike. And, I mean, it's just really crazy some of the things that they're doing now. Now, the difference is, is the, the motorcycles that they're riding on now are a lot more powerful and a lot lighter as well. <laughs> the bikes that he was riding on were really heavy. It was a, a Triumph. And, uh, and you know, it, it's amazing some of the things that he was doing. But, you know, the reason I'm saying that is that, you know, I just have this feeling that God created us all to have this kind of desire in our heart that we want to get out on the edge. That we want to get out there and do something a little bit dangerous every once in a while. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do, do, do you relate to what I'm talking about? Come on. Don't look chicken at me. It's true. Now, the older we get, the more chicken we get, I think. Right? <laughs> it's like, nah, I know my body. I don't think I can do that anymore. Right? But, um, but still, we have this desire in us to be a little bit dangerous. And so every once in a while, when we get into that mode, and especially in the spirit, in the spirit, there are times when we can get on the edge and we need God's help. And he's there to rescue us. And here's the scripture, 2 Corinthians 1, verses 8 through 11, it says this, we don't want you in the dark, friends, about how hard it was when, we came all, when, all, when all this came down on us in Asia province. It was so bad we didn't think we were going to make it. We felt like we'd been sent to death row, and that was all for us. As it turned out, it was for the best thing that could have happened. Instead of trusting in our own strength or wit to get out of it, we were forced to trust God totally. Everybody say, trust God totally. Not a bad idea, since he's the God who raises the dead. And he did it. He rescued us from certain doom... And he'll do it again, rescuing us as many times as we need rescuing. You and your prayers are part of the rescue operation. I don't want you in the dark about that either. I can see your faces even now lifted in praise for God's deliverance of us, a rescue in which your prayers played such a crucial part. So awesome, isn't it? God was there to rescue them. Now here's the deal in, with needing to be rescued. Again, it means that you've gotten yourself into a situation that's out of your own control, okay? Most Christians only need rescuing from situations that many times they put themselves into. I want that to sink in for just a minute. We do something stupid financially, and then what do we do? Oh, God, help me, right? And what does he do? He loves us. He rescues us, right? Or you do something stupid in a relationship, right? And then what do you do? Oh, God, help me. And what does he do? He rescues us, right? 
You do something, you know, and you're not wise with what you eat or how you live. You start to get sick. This thing or that happens, right? Maybe you're not good with your confession, right? And what happens? Oh, God, help me. And what does he do? He rescues us. That's right. (laughs) You see, what God is looking for, he's looking for us to get into dangerous situations. And not about finances or relationships or any of the things that I've just talked about. What I'm talking about is that he wants you to get out on the edge. He wants you to get out there and start doing some things that are a little bit dangerous. I love the story of Jason. I'm going to pick on you for a second, Jason, because you're awesome. A couple weeks ago, Spirit of God moving in the service. Val prays for you. Tingling God the Holy Spirit all over you, up and down, right? And then you go to this bar. What? Yes, absolutely. It's a Chinese food restaurant with karaoke. Actually, Val and I have been there before with Jason. But he's going there for a birthday party, and he knows that he's on a divine appointment. He's on a mission for God. And he gets there, and he ministers to these people, and at the very end, right out on the streets of Portland... He grabs all their hands and said, we're going to pray. And just starts praying over them. And the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit starts nailing these people. I tell you what, that's dangerous, isn't it? That's getting out there, isn't it? And a lot of times we get chicken. I mean, would we dare go and see somebody or meet with somebody that we had just met about a year ago? You know? And actually develop a relationship with some people that you don't know anything really about, but you do because the Spirit of God's telling you, go love on these people. It's dangerous. A little bit dangerous. And what if God was to say, oh, this person's sick or this person needs healing? Oh, you, you want me now to pray for him, God? Ah. I'm so excited. My friend Rick Feather's here tonight. I love you, Rick. We went to Thailand together and had a great time. My favorite part of that whole time, and you know what I'm going to talk about. I was, I'd gotten up in front of this group of people. It was this open-air market out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know where we were at. If they said, find your way home, we would have had to pray, wouldn't we, Rick? But we were out in the middle of this open-air market. They had set up this truck with a, with a loudspeaker and a microphone, and I just began to preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to these people. They had no clue who Jesus was. There was no, you know, they had one little tiny church with just a couple of people in it, just a couple blocks away, and that we were there to help them establish their church in a greater measure. And so there we were, we were preaching, talking about Jesus, how awesome he was, and then I said something very bold. If any of you in this room, or in this open air market, need healing for anything, I don't care what it is, You come on up here, and you just get up here, and we're going to pray for you in Jesus' name, and you're going to be healed completely. And the interpreter, he, you know, is following right along with me, you know, and he gets done saying that, and we stop. And there's probably a couple hundred people just right there, another few hundred people behind them, and they're all just staring at us. And I'm staring at them, and they're staring at me, And nothing's happening. And I looked at him and I said, okay, you're not coming to me, I'm coming to you. And I put the microphone down and I went right into the crowd. I went this way, Rick went that way. Before I knew it, by the time I got back with Rick, he'd already seen people with leprosy healed. He saw all sorts of amazing miracles healed. I saw blind eyes opened up. I saw deaf ears opened up. I want you to know something. We have to get out there. Get a little dangerous. Say something about how good God is and how awesome and how powerful he is so that he has to rescue you. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know, Rick, what you were thinking when you saw me take off, but it's like, hey, he's going, I'm going to go for it too, right? Ah! You see, that's what the Spirit of God is for. We, we're here and we receive and we drink, 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 and I'm so full right now, I want to fall down. 
But it's not so that I can feel so good about myself. It's so that it can spill out on everybody else I come in contact with. There's been so many times where I've been so filled with the Spirit, and then I go somewhere and do something outlandish. One time I was in a Subway restaurant ordering my sandwich after a Holy Ghost meeting. And there was a dude there, and he was just start, like doing this. I said, what's up? He goes, I don't know, man, but I just feel really weird right now. It's a cue, you know, you can work with this. It's like, are you upset? Yeah. I said, I can give you peace over your whole body right now. Would you like that? Yeah. And I led him to Christ. And then I encouraged him to go to this other church, this church that we had just come from over in Wenatchee. I want you to know something. The power of God is there to help you accomplish God's will in this world. You know, we are in revival And it's time for us to allow the Holy Spirit to make us very uncomfortable. You know, last week I told you I didn't want to dance. I didn't. Still wouldn't want to. But I knew I was supposed to. And I told Aaron and uh, Justin, I said, you know, would you come up on the platform with me at the end of service and just do whatever, allow to whatever, whatever happens, allow it to happen? They both looked at me and said, yeah, sure. <laughs> they didn't know what we were going to do, but they joined right in, didn't they? I don't know why we did what we did or the reason behind it, but I know I was obedient to the Spirit of God. And every time you're obedient to the Spirit of God, there's a blessing that comes behind it. And we're seeing some unusual signs and wonders, so amazing things in our services, guys. I can't even tell you some of them. But I can tell you this. There's some things happening outside of our control that it's awesome, and it's God control. And I want to be in that God control, out of my control and into God control. Because who knows, maybe a family will show up at the church on a Friday night when you're leading worship and have an opportunity for us. You know, really, everything that's happening with you two right now, it's not about what's happening to you. Do you know that? It's really about our church receiving the blessing. And it was a test for us on what we would do and how we would treat you. But I hope you know we're treating you like we would Christ. And because we're treating you like we would Christ, praise God, we get the blessing from that. Amen? And you get blessed too, which is even better. And we hope you hang around a long time. We'd love to see you become leadership in this church. You can reach out to homeless people and hungry people. We'll we'll help you. We'll do whatever it takes to help you. You know, that's your calling. That's what you love to do. Why not? You guys are my, my brother and my sister. I love you so much. Val is just enjoying her time with you. The Bible is filled with story after story of God rescuing people. But back to 2 Corinthians 1. What happened to Paul in Asia? Why did he feel it necessary to inform them of the problems? What response did he want them to have? So it leads me to number one. What happened? What happened? Here you go. It all starts with the time in the Holy Spirit in Acts 13. There's a group of people. they're, They're in fasting and praying together. They're ministering under the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God through a prophetic word, says, okay, Paul and Barnabas, you're going on a mission. And they lay hands on them, and they send them off. And they're off to Asia. All right? (laughs) They obey the Spirit's leading. They preach. They heal. Miracles are flowing. And Paul gets dragged out of the town, beat up. There there, there are all sorts of amazing things happening. (laughs) Paul then goes back to the same town where there's great miracles and great attacks and continues ministering until the Spirit moves him to his next assignment. But check out the end of Acts 13. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them 
from their region. They shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. They needed rescuing on a small stand, on a small, you know, part there. But they need rescuing because they thought they were in the right spot, but they're getting thrown out of town. Some people would say, well, if you're thrown out of town, God must not have been in it. Oh, no, absolutely wrong. God was completely in it. God was completely in it. If you remember what he said earlier, he said it was the best thing that could have ever happened to us. That first scripture I shared with you. He said it was because we couldn't rely on our own strength and our own ability. We had to rely completely on God. (laughs) Now check out what happens next. Oh, Acts 14, Paul and Barnabas continue on their journey, making their way back to Derby. Miracle still happening. And check out what happens in verse 19. Then some Jews from Antioch and Iconium caught up with them and turned the fickle crowd against them. They beat Paul unconscious, dragged him outside the town, and left him for dead. Some translations say that they stoned him to death. But as the disciples gathered around him, he came to and he got up. And he went back into town, and the next day, left with Barnabas for Derby. Stop for a second. I feel like Princess Bride, right? It's like, wait. How can he be dead? He's not done yet. You're right. He's just not dead. He's not dead. He's completely dead. He's just mostly dead, right? Yeah, and when you stone somebody back in those eight times, they didn't make a mess of it. They knew what they were doing, and they did it well. But what does Paul do? He's laying there. He's dead, I believe. But God says, no, you're not done yet. Up he gets. Shakes it off. On we go. Goes back into town. Wait a minute. Those are the people in the town that just tried to kill me. He goes back into town, right? (laughs) He went back into town. The next day left Barnabas for Derby after proclaiming the message in Derby. And establishing a strong core of disciples. You know what? There was probably some people in that group of disciples that just the day before had thrown rocks at him. Saw him come back to life and went, oh, hey, (laughs) something's going on here. We better get on the right side of this thing. Right? (laughs) They retraced their steps to Lystra and Iconium, then to Antioch, putting muscle and sinew in the lives of the disciples, urging them to stick with what they'd begun to believe and not quit, making it clear to them that it wouldn't be easy Anyone signing up for the kingdom of God has got to go through plenty of hard times. <laughs> Yay! Hey, guys, I got some good news for you. We're going to come here. You're going to get filled up with the Holy Spirit. You're going to fall. You're going to feel drunk. You're going to laugh. It's going to be great. He's going to heal up your body. He's going to fill you with his spirit. You're going to get filled with the power of God. And then guess what? Bad stuff's going to start happening. You're going to go pray for people and they may curse at you. Mm. I'm so glad we don't live in the Middle East now. Following the Holy Spirit, devil gets mad, tough stuff happens, and then the rescue comes. Yay. (laughs) So the first thing is he's telling them, this is what happened. This is what's happening. And this is why it was good. The rescue will come. It will always come. None of us ever experienced the thrill of the rescue Because we never get out there. And God's looking for you to get out there. Because he's got a big rescue for you. I remember one time we were in India. And Dr. Rarulapan, who we were working with, had told us he had a ministry to young ladies to teach them how to use electric sewing machines because it wasn't part of the caste system. And, uh, And so these young girls would come in and they would start to learn how to use electric um, sewing machines and then they would get born again. And it was a process of about a year 
of discipling before they fully gave up their Hindu practices and started following Jesus completely. But Dr. Rulapan told us that there was going to be some meetings and that there would be times when we would see uh, or have opportunities uh, to go in people's homes and they would have idols in their home. And, and so he talked about how he had seen this one time where these people were on a walk and this other village didn't like this other village that was going on a walk. So they went and they smashed their idol. And when they did that, there was this big war and people were killed over it. And he said, if you guys, and one of us asked the question, what happens if we smash one of the idols? He said, they will smash you. They will kill you. And we were in this little <laughs> tiny house, but it was packed with people. There's probably a hundred people packed into this little tiny house. One bedroom, one kitchen, just this, and all together in this one cubicle. And people were just packed in there. I mean, Val was up with this one guy named Ken, Pastor Nathaniel was over here. I was over on this other side. And we'd gone through some ministry. Ken had spoke and, and ministered. And then Pastor Nathaniel got up there and he did something crazy. He grabbed the idol off the wall, tore it off the wall. And he smashed it on the ground. Val and Ken were like, Ken was a bodybuilder. And so she was like, okay, I'll be safe because I know Ken will just, you know, right? And I was off to one side and I wasn't even thinking about what he had just done other than the fact like, is there a different way that you could have done this so that there wouldn't be glass shards and everything all over? Because we're all barefoot in these people's home, you know? And there's this gasp that happens in the room. It's like, <gasps> right? And everybody's kind of looking around like, what do we do? But I'm telling you, something amazing happened. The presence of God just went like this in the room. And it was okay. And it got swept up. And we kept praying for people. And miracles were happening. There's one little girl that probably about 10 or 12 years old that I had an opportunity to pray for. I didn't even realize how sick she was. I just saw a spirit of death on her, laid hands on her. They tell me later that her head was covered with lice. That her, her body was just ashen gray. Looked like she was about ready to die. We prayed for her. I saw life come back into that body. I believe she's alive today because of the power of Jesus Christ. Rescued. Rescued. He's there to help us, right? So why did Paul tell them about it, number two? I'll tell you why. Because they would partnered with him in the ministry, to do the ministry. They were partners. Just like you're partners with us in the ministry of the house, we are partners with you. We are partners with the Holy Spirit, to see God do amazing things through us. We partner together. We partner with the body of Christ, with the Holy Spirit, right? And Paul was telling them about it because they were partners with him in ministry. Matter of fact, when you look at the 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, Paul is talking to them about giving an offering so that he can help, they can help propel Paul to the next level and the next area that they're supposed to go. And so they were partnered in finances. They were partnered in prayer. If you remember that early scripture I shared with you, what did he say? He said, you prayed with me, and your prayer was a part of my rescue. Your prayers are part of my rescue. Prayers rescue people. And God is looking for us to be people of prayer. Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, can you not spend an hour with me? Right at the most crucial moment. Now for some of us, the thought of praying for an hour is like crazy talk. You know, it's like, ah, I don't know if I could do that. That's all right. Start with 15 minutes then. Pray every day because you're part of the rescue plan. They had partners as well for encouragement in the tough times. Second Corinthians 1 again. And he did it, rescued us from certain doom, and he'll do it again. Rescuing us as many times as we need rescuing. 
He wanted them to follow his example. So he's telling them about it. It may get tough. It may get hard. But don't, don't quit giving. Don't quit praying. And don't quit getting out there. Because it's going to get tough. But if you'll pray and you'll give and you'll keep getting out there, good things are going to happen and God will rescue you over and over and over again as many times as you need rescuing. Get out there. So it leaves us with number three. What is our response? Well, we need to pray. <laughs> we need to be people of prayer. James five sixteen. make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. The prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you want to mess with me? I've got something powerful for you to reckon, to, something to be reckoned with. It's so great. That power is so great. Get ready. Mm. People of prayer, praying. I find in this move of the Spirit, I'm praying in the Spirit a whole lot more. I just, all the time, I'm finding myself just praying in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit. People come up and try and talk to me. I'll be praying in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. There's power to it. Jude 20 tells us to build up our whole self in the most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. It's powerful and something to be reckoned with. Next part about that is we need to get into the Spirit. Get into the Spirit. Filled. Drinking. 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 I don't know how many times I have to tell you this, folks. I'm drinking, I'm drinking, I'm drinking. As well as... <laughs> Praying in the Spirit, I find myself saying that phrase over and over and over again. I'm drinking, I'm drinking, I'm drinking. What does the Bible say? The Bible tells us in Ephesians 5, verse 17. Don't live carelessly, unthinking. Make sure you understand what the Master wants. Don't drink too much wine. That cheapens your life. Drink the Spirit of God. Huge droughts of Him. <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about a military person I know that loves going to Belgium and Germany. He knows what I'm talking about. to do that with the spirit ha <laughs> ha I'm drinking I'm drinking I'm drinking ah. you can laugh all you want I'm telling you the truth of God's works this is what the master wants I know it more than anything else this is what he wants for you. Drink. Drink deeply. Drink until you can't drink anymore. Drink, 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 drink in the Holy Spirit. Every time you come to the front, every time you're in the service, every time you're even just in prayer, just say, I'm drinking and drink him in. Why? Because you're being filled. It's a way of you knowing that he is filling you with his power, with his presence. And the great thing about being drunk is you just don't care. You're not afraid. You're not freaked out. You're just filled. And you're ready to give and receive. And you'll get out there and start doing some stuff that's beyond you. And you'll need to be rescued. He'll say, all right, here's a word of knowledge for you. There's someone in this. You're going to go to Walmart, and you're going to go down aisle three in the groceries. And there'll be someone there wearing purple. And they are going to have carpal tunnel. And wait a minute, really? Why not? Just get filled up and then go. Get filled up and then go. Because that's what this is for. 
keep drinking. Leads me to the last point. We need to cross the chicken line. Go into all the world and make disciples. All the world. Have no fear. Do no boldness. Try something new and keep on trying. Heidi Baker of Iris Ministries prayed for the deaf hundreds of times before seeing miracles come in Africa. Try something new. Do something different. Be who God created you to be, and that is a part of the body of Christ. Beautiful thing that happened tonight. Shelby, how's your hip feeling? Feels good? Cool thing about it was that I didn't have anything to do with it. I had three lovely ladies. <laughs> Just come and minister love. Right? Love. That's all it takes. It's love. It's all we need. It's the unimaginable, incredible power that's available to all of us. Val, come on up here. I know you're supposed to come up here and you're supposed to share a story, and I don't know why. I, I just told, I didn't tell you this earlier, but I know you know. <laughs> Are you drunk? <laughs> so um, I'm not. Why am I clicking? Why I don't know. Am You're I good. clicking? Just. Um, so um, uh, there's a sound thing going on um, in my ears for a couple of weeks, and it doesn't happen all the time, but. Um, I can tell you that um, a lot of you have had loved ones go home to heaven. And I can tell you it's really loud there. There's a lot going on because I'm hearing it a lot. I don't know why. And tonight while um, Mike was speaking, and I, I've never seen stuff like this, um, They, they were they were over here <laughs> they were over there and they were like going they were jumping off the platform and they were coming out here and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that they're angels and I, okay so in the word it says what angels do angels angels rescue people yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. They've come to prisons and rescued people yeah. in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they um, they fed people. Right? Yeah. Preston, didn't the angel feed someone? Birds or something. I don't know. Anyway, angels they're around. Too, yeah. Angels angels do stuff. They um, In the New Testament, they'd they come do. to that pool and they'd... They'd they bring healing at yeah. the, I think it's called Beth Bethesda. Mm -hmm. It's in Maryland. But anyway, um, they'd. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, that's what they did. But I, I asked the Lord, I said, what, why am I, why am I seeing this? Why, why am I seeing these things? They're, they're over there and they're running. They're jump. They were, they, j they would jump. I don't know why they need to jump. Can't they fly or something? <laughs> they were jumping. But I know that they're here, and angels have specific jobs. They're not just, they aren't just created to float around on clouds. That's dumb. That's a Hallmark card, and we don't get our doctrine from there. We get it from the Word of God. But there are angels that are here tonight, and it may not be for everybody, but somebody needs to be rescued. And there's angels here that, and I don't know, maybe they have, I don't know what they're for. We don't worship angels. That's weird. That's bizarre. That's, that's not. Jesus. We worship Jesus. But angels, it says, are sent to serve those that will inherit salvation. They're here to minister to us. That's their job. And they're here to minister to some people tonight. And so um, 
I just, I don't know who that's going to be. And you may see them, you may not see them, but that's not any big deal. Just seek Jesus. Yeah. Just seek the Lord. You might need healing in your body. You might need healing in some part of it. Um, something. You might need finances. Um, you might need to get set free tonight. You might need to get out of jail. Paul, Peter, someone, they're in prison. Angels came. It was all over. And so I just I want to encourage you to know that, that God has sent and the prayers that people have been praying. There have been people that have been sent. God's gotten them up this week, and they've been praying at night. And there have been people praying all over. And there's been all this prayer. And when you pray, that that releases these these guys to do this stuff. Guys, I don't know what they are, whatever. But they're, they're here to do stuff. So just tonight, we go into worship, just know that God, God will send, I mean, if he has to, he'll send birds to take care of you. <laughs> God loves you. Yeah. Receive that. Quit thinking that you're not, you're, that he's not going to do it for you. Quit thinking that, well, God will do it for other people, but he won't do it for me. Stop that. Yeah. Stop thinking that. God's going to do it for you. Because he's good, and what he does is good. And he'll shake the ground to set you free. He'll move things. He's the high priest of our confession. When we say, God, I need help, and I believe that you're going to do it. I believe that you're going to heal my body. I believe that you're going to provide for my family. I believe that you're going to, whatever the situation is. Um. Get you out of what you got yourself into. He's going to get you out. Last week, um, Brandy Miller from uh, Bingen was here. So funny because she came forward for prayer, but she wasn't expecting what she got. She got a whole lot more than what um, she was bargaining for, really. It was really cool. It's what she needed it's really what she needed. Um, but I, I really feel like we want all of our uh, binge in house to come forward right now. If you can. Some of our core, most of our core. There's a few that aren't here, but praise God. I need leadership to come help. Could you just line up here and face me, guys? Just join hands, guys. Remember, there's unity. There's amazing power. And I want you guys, the rest of the leadership team, and, and you know, even uh, pastor's council members as well, if you'd like to come. Get up here and pray as well. Thank you, Father. Just raise your hands, guys, and get ready. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Touch them, Lord. Fill them. Fill them. Encourage them, God. God, I know it's hard at times out in Benja. I know that church, it's hard. Sometimes that area, it seems hard. People have said it's hard. It's hard. No, 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 no. God's burden is light. It's easy easy and light because his power and his presence is on you to transform that valley for Christ receive right now a fresh encouragement of the Holy Spirit <laughs> thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord Thank you, Jesus, fresh. Holy Spirit, drink, 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 drink. Thank you, Jesus. Drink it in. There it is. All right. 
Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, you told us as we build people, you'll build the church. I believe it. I believe it. And as you guys flow in the Spirit and allow the Spirit of God to flow through you, you will not recognize the house binging in a year. You might as well stand up and join in with us, everybody. Filled with the Spirit, filled with joy. Ooh, hallelujah. Ashley, Ashley, right there. Um, just raise your hands, close your eyes, think of Jesus. Ladies, get ready. <laughs> Filled. Catch her. She needs refreshing. The season she's in. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Whew. <laughs> need to get on the right track with God it's close as one word one name the name above all names the word of God tells us whoever calls out on the name of Jesus shall be saved I call out on him right now because I need it Jesus You changed my life. And I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much, Jesus. If you need your life changed, just call out to him. Say, Jesus, I need you. I love you. Change my life forever. It'll get you on the right track, get you in the right flow. If you need healing for anything, this is what we're going to do. Just head over to that side over there and there'll be a few people over there to pray for you leadership team members over there that will be over there to pray for you for your healing you're going to see healing happen if you need refreshing in the Holy Spirit you go over to this side over here you could be shot <laughs> at least shocked with the power and the presence of God so head over that way and then if you just you want to just worship the Lord and just stay in this awesome presence right here. Preston's going to lead. And if you want the band, that's up to you. I don't care one way or the other.
Father, we just thank you for tonight, God. We love you. Thank you for your presence. We just give you all the praise and all the glory. And I, I want to go ahead and release you to go if you got to go. And um, if you've got kids, I want to make sure that uh, somebody's released you to go ahead and get your kids. And uh, we're just going continue, uh, to continue to play and uh, just continue to receive from the Lord. your presence fill this place. Let heaven come. Let your angels be
just thank you for your presence. God, thank you that everything, um, for everything that you're doing tonight, God, and everything that you've done. Help us to continue just to, to, to step out on the edge, God, um, and to get dangerous for you. And that we would just let you be dangerous through us, God. And just let you do everything, God, that you desire to do through us. And that we would just, just let go. And let you do your work through us, God. God, speak and minister to our neighbors. Um, any employees or coworkers, God. I pray that we would be completely open completely open to all that you want to do through us, God. Completely surrender to you, God. Father, that we would see heaven on earth. God, because your work and your will and your move is heavenly, God. And it's good. And it's amazing. And God, that, the, that you would move through us, God. That we would let you and that we would surrender completely and entirely to you and what you have to bring. And God, we know that that requires um, us to be uncomfortable and to get dangerous, God. So we just love you and give you all the praise, God. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, again, I want to continue just to go ahead just to say that, you know, if God's doing something right now with you and um, you know, continue just to let him do that. And I want to just dismiss everybody. And if you could help us break down, I totally appreciate it. And as you do so, um, watch out for anybody on the ground. Watch your step. <laughs>